Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. Today we're going to be reviewing Sylvester Stallone's Judge Dredd movie. <sighs> and today I'm not joined by Mario, which might shock you. I'm actually joined by a young fellow who's younger than Mario. Not by much, but I. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, but you are younger. Would you like to introduce yourself? I am Matthew. Um, most people just call me Matt. So there you go. Most people <laughs> just call you Ma. Right, okay. That's a good way to introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, today we're talking about Sylvester Stallone's Judge Dredd movie, which is, uh, for want of a better phrase, Matt... Um, shite. Shite, aye. <laughs> it is pretty shite. Um, the film is... To be fair, I'll give it credit. It, it, it does look like a Judge Dredd film. Aye. You can't compare it to Carl Urban's Dredd, though. No, you can't, because no. that was just beautiful. Yeah. That's a beautiful film, and it's all about drugs. Don't take drugs. It's drugs a fun movie. Drugs are my head. So this is Matthew's first time on the podcast, so he, he'll be he'll be doing a lot of talking. I hope you know this is you being <laughs> tested. This is your test, Matthew. Oh, so never a test or the revised. No, no, you're being tested. This is where we sign you off to say you're all right. So if people like you, you know you'll stay. All right. But cool. if people don't like you, then I'm still staying. All right. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> If that's if that's what you want, but yes, uh, so we're talking today about uh, Judge Dredd, not the greatest old comic book movie, but uh, it has its good points, it has its bad points. Aye. So we'll give you a brief rundown of the story. Basically, Judge Dredd is about a big burly lawbringer called Judge Dredd, and he lives in Mega City One, and this happens sometime in America's future because you know dystopian America, Aye. America always wins, and. Um, the judges are a group of law enforcers who, you know, uphold the law because there's a lot of rioting, there's a lot of unsavoury characters. Would that be correct, Matt? That would be pretty much spot on, aye. Um, other things about, a wee bit of backstory about it is also that it is actually based, in, right, it's sort of set and meant to be set in Scotland. That's what it's based off. The city is based off Glasgow, which you can kind of see in this Is film. it? It is actually. Are you talking I, um, shit. I, I I'm not talking shit. Like the original, the original story writers were from Glasgow, and they based it on their home city. But although they did set it in America, I, I'm, well, we're we're from Glasgow. <laughs> like, what does that I know. say about us? Glasgow's a night. Well, <laughs> it's, it's an alright place. It's uh, just don't go during you know dark hours. I'm guessing. <laughs> I suppose I. I suppose I. So yes, um, we have some. Points. I'll give you a brief rundown of the story. You know, Judge Dredd, you know, the master at bringing people in. Kind of like the Punisher, but kind of abides by the law of the time. And he is judge, jury, and executioner if he deems it. And mm. that's kind of it. So basically, he's running about, he's doing his job. But then, somewhere down the line, he's, his brother, Rico, gets let out. Well, doesn't get let out of prison. He breaks out of prison. And frames Dredd for a murder. Uh, there's been a murder. <laughs> like, there's been a murder. And Judge Dredd gets the blame of it. Yada, yada, yada. We get to a point where, well, well, the biggest flaw of the film is Judge Dredd doesn't wear his helmet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... For people that don't know this, like, in the comics, Judge Dredd is notoriously known for just always wearing the helmet. Like, never takes it off. And I mean, never. Like, there's even been, like, panels of him, like, woke, like in bed with just, with a helmet on. Yeah. Like, it is that dedicated to the story. There's only, well, as I've known of, one panel where he's ever taken the helmet off and they even censored his face in the comic to make sure nobody knew his like comic book identity. Not that you could, you know, pick him out in a lineup. So yes, um that is a thing that happens. Uh Judge Dredd never takes his helmet off. That's it is like you say, it's kinda of became a, a comedy thing now where it's like even in the comic when he takes it off they censor it in some way just to make sure that, you know, you don't know and I think that ov- that will symbolise obviously naturally his dedication to the cause really. He never takes his uniform off and you know, why wouldn't you? It's a badass costume. But uh aye, so the story kinda goes that Judge Dredd gets sentenced to life in prison. He then gets out because a group of cannibalistic mutants on the outside shoot the ship down and he gets captured and then eventually gets away and then goes back to Mega City, deals with his brother. End of plot. It's like, Aye. that's pretty much it summed up in a nutshell, to be honest, if you ask me. So let's probably, let's start at the beginning. Let's say the first 16 and a half minutes. Which are, you know, the best 16 and a half minutes of the movie. But uh, not to say there isn't, you know, 
the odd minute or two of good goodness throughout the rest of it but the first 16 and a half minutes are solid um we'll find out why 16 and a half minutes is the exact number and just a wee bit but starting off from the beginning like as you said it does visually look amazing well well amazing. Not amazing. for the time for the time for the it time did, okay. it, looked, it looked brilliant Compa- comparing it to the actual the comics it looked almost perfect it had a bit of a sort of blade runner like fifth element sort of feel to it which was obviously they were really big successes back in the day they still are well not that they have gone downhill or anything like that um but well depends what film you're watching to be honest aye, aye, it's true, the, it's don't true. get me wrong it's like some of the special effects do actually look better than some films i've seen the day to be honest aye. like that's uh that's a sad thing yeah. to say but it's the truth um yeah so that happens. Judge Dredd is kind of stopped. The thing is, the Mega City One's going through a lot of hard times right now. There's a few riots going on. Aye. Judges are being killed left, right, and centre. Dredd kind of stands as the the pinnacle of what judges want to be. People that are like somebody who's so dedicated to the law, like it must physically hurt him, like to be so dedicated to the law. And you you get you get a lot of this, but naturally because Stallone's in it. You expect some action movie cheese, which we we do get. Oh, I mean, yeah. Matt, do you want to tell us what his famous catchphrase is in this film? Apart from you know the classic "I am the law," <laughs> uh, there's also you know multiple times he says this in the movie, and it's not even when it's not even just like a, a catchphrase; it's just really annoying. Um, but well, well, then it probably is a catchphrase, then I guess. Um, the more, main thing that he says, and he says a good three hundred times at least. <laughs> but that's how many times it runs through my head every time I'm watching it is I know you say that or I knew you'd do that and it gets really annoying after the second time you hear it because the first time oh, you're thinking oh that's just like a bit of 90s like action hero like cheesy but that's it that's overweight and then he repeats it a good few like times after that and you're just like you're kind of done it to death mate like <laughs> calm down um, but what else I mean, I I mean, (laughs) there's nothing else to say about it. I mean, that's his catchphrase and that's the end of it. I mean, it's always like, somebody will be like, oh, I'm not coming with you. And he'll be like, oh, I knew you'd say that. And then he'll just presume to shoot them or later on, which is actually quite a funny bit when he blows a guy's car up. Like that is, that is, that's, that is pretty funny. It's just like, I knew you'd say that and blows his car up and you're just like Stallone. And then after that, he says happy motoring, which I'll give you is actually a wee bit more funnier than, you know, his usual sort of, but at the same time, like it's it's like this constantly, he says that one line, like that I knew you'd say that. And then he says another cheesier line, which you think he could have just waited and said that instead. Like, just, just leave it with the one, the one like different line from usual. Like if you keep throwing in the same one, it's just a setup for the for a joke coming, and you can't expect it from time to time. I'm thinking. I mean, if you follow the source material, I've never really associated Drudge Dread with being a funny guy. Yeah, he does have <laughs> quips and sort of like sort really sarcastic things to say, but um, this film rips the piss a bit, like in terms of that. But it's some of the better stuff of the film, to be honest. You know, you're never going to get a film that doesn't have that, especially if it's an action film. You yeah. know, you want your action hero to be like, oh, like, I don't even care. Like, <laughs> I'm the hero of this story and that's it. On to the subject matter, though. Um, Judge Dredd uh, has a brother called Rico. Mm-hmm. Rico gets out of prison and then goes to get his his lawbringer weapon, his, his suit of armour, which he will go then, you know, frame Dredd for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he also he also reactivates a little a little friend of his a little I believe it's a <coughs> an ABC warrior. <laughs> Aye. So like these guys in the comics are like they're badass. Uh, there's also been like a run of, like a separate run of just the ABC warriors, and it, I haven't read them myself, but I have heard lots of stuff about them, and they used they're pretty much the Judge Dread equivalent of Terminators, like they're indestructible. Um, there was like in the movie it does mention that the ABC warriors were like they're they're only allowed to no well, the one that he finds is only meant to be kept as an ornament or an antique and they have to be deactivated and obviously he activates it straight away and because he pre- and he pretty much uses it as a bodyguard which 
if I'm being honest, it's probably the best idea ever. Like, if super villain wise, having a bodyguard that is pretty much indestructible. So it is like, as as I say, there are some good points in it, and that is one of the good points that <laughs> that makes a wee bit of sense in this movie. I mean, if you're going to be a super villain, then you know, have an indestructible robot as your yeah, bodyguard. That's that. Like, make sure you've got good backup. Uh, anyway, so, you know, Rico goes on and decides that he's going to frame Judge Dredd for a murder a couple of minutes in. We get, you know, the the judges kind of come to get Dredd and they say, by the way, you've murdered somebody, you know, we need to we need to do something about okay. you. And Judge Dredd's like, but I'm the law! Like, and uh, yeah. he kind of has a bit of a, a rant about that and stuff. However, obviously, just before this, he's been demoted to a kind of lecturer in the, in the sort of academy where yeah. he's kind of training people and stuff and that stuff's not relevant because you know that's past 16 and a half minute mark where he takes mm. his fucking helmet off and never puts it back <laughs> on like i don't know right i, I i've just a, a big thing when um carl Urban's dread came out was that everybody was like please for the love of god have him wear the helmet the whole way through it that was that was a big deal and he did and, and he, he did. did and he did to his credit he did um, however, one bold statement I'm going to make, right, is that Stallone had the better costume. Aye, I will <laughs> give you that. Like, even though Carl Urban, like, I think it was that was that was after Batman, like the Nolan movies came out, wasn't it? Yeah. So obviously, all the sort of comic book movies were try to go for a more realistic sort of look, sort of idea. So if you thought about dragging like a comic book and try and make it as close to the costume as possible as you could. <laughs> If you try and make it as close to the costume, it's sometimes it doesn't transfer as good. So obviously in Carl Urban's case, that's what the, the way they done it, and it, it worked out almost perfectly, I think. But obviously, but the, the I do get what you mean. The costume did look perfect, and I think the only way that they were able to pull it off was because it was the nineties. Yeah, I mean they had the <laughs> giant gold shoulder pads, uh, and they had knee the... pads, the green knee pads, the green boots, and all that, and it actually it looked frame for frame pretty much exactly as you would want it to look but the thing was to me was his costume didn't look too <laughs> he's running about with big gold shoulder pads and stuff Aye. like that and, like he's 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 you know he's showcasing some serious bling on his body <laughs> but like you know to me i was just sitting there like this costume is amazing like it didn't seem out of place to me for some reason i just thought this is cool i'd wear that i'd wear that for a night out you know, like, I'd be sitting there like, look at me, like, I am the best dressed. Like, that's the kind of thing I would be running about. Did you not say you wouldn't mind getting arrested by somebody dressed like that? And I, was, I wouldn't be... I, I, made, I, made, I, made, <laughs> I may have made a comment about, you know, like, not it wasn't just, you know, the knee pads, you know, the jock strap and, you know, lycra, like, that he was wearing. But I kind of get what you're talking about, aye. I wouldn't, I wouldn't the mind. Sho- from the shoulders down, like, it kind of, you know, kind of lose a wee bit of authority. But, like, I kind of get what you mean. He does, like, with the shoulder pads, you get, like... I'm not going to mess with him. Well, I'm going to I'm going to be very honest with you, Matt. I am a renowned uh, homosexual. All right, well, and I and and if up. and if if Judge Dredd came up behind me and put his horn on me, Mer. whatever happened happened, right? You know, it's fine. He could break the law. He could break me. Like he could. <laughs> I, I, it was just such an experience, and I was just sitting there like, uh, th- th- like uh, yeah. Anyway, right. Enough about that. But effectively. Stallone in his day could have had me. Not now, but like, you know, I'd buy him a jumper now, maybe. As a friend. <laughs> Not as a sex friend. Okay. But yeah, anyway, on to the, <laughs> onto the film. Um, so yes, uh, Dredd gets uh, sentenced to life and he's been sent across the corrupt earth, Aye. the corrupted earth, to a prison, uh, which gets shot down uh, by some cannibalistic... Um, not cases. Not cases, yes, and uh, they're not just not cases because they're religious. They're uh, not cases because you know they want to eat people and they're evil, evil people. But the original, the original inside doesn't really help. But you know, no, well, he just all of his lines are like spouted in religion. It's clearly <laughs> there should be bears. subtitles that just says um, talks in religion. Like that's yeah, that's literally yeah. it. But yeah, at this bit we see another, we see a, a we, we see another Judge Dread character. Um, a bit later on because the, the comic relief in this film is a little guy who Judge Dredd puts away at the start who is on the same ship as him who's played by um, Rod Schneider 
Is it actually? <laughs> it is. Oh my god, I couldn't recognise him. Like, oh my god, because he wasn't a stapler. Yeah, he's a. Uh, he's sort of like uh, he's the comic relief of the film. You know, he's always got something he's like to say. Kick. Yeah, he's he's a sidekick effectively, and you know he plays Fergie. Fergie is how I pronounce his name. That's how it's going to be. It's going to be Fergie. Right. He is Fergalicious, and that's the end <laughs> of it. But in this bit, uh, when Dredd and Fergie escape, they bump into Mean Machine Angel. If you don't know Mean Machine Angel, you've probably seen him. He's got a big metal Aye. bit on his head, and he spins a dial round in his head. And he tends to be on most of the 2000 AD, like sort of advertisement stuff like i don't know if he's a really big i know i don't really read 2000 ad comics but i really should because I mean, you know was, i like red it so was an abc was it was quite interesting to see him actually because um and a lot of films that me and mario have reviewed before this a lot of these films make up their own villains and don't really fall back on mm-hmm. villains i mean mean machine angels only in it for what <laughs> three minutes oh. Uh, well, well, in total, I'd probably say about fifty minutes screen time. But like, he's I'm not he's not got that many lines, and it's mainly Pa for most of it because he's talking to his dad. That's Pa, uh, pa? That's, pa? That, that that is that is essentially his fucking script in this movie. But um, well, that 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 it tends to be the fact, and um, yeah, that's it. But Mean Machine was quite a good addition. Yeah, it was it it made it feel more, and it added also added to the effect of like. It being a comic book movie because it looked exactly as it does in the comic book like well as close as you could get I'd say <laughs> for that time um, I think it was without, as close with, as you with, could without get without CG right. which you know CG is kind of taking over everything nowadays and like to have a bit of practical effect in it is actually decent well that was the thing I think practical effect even today if they were to put him in a film would be the best way to go aye because it, he, he's this makeshift you know, he's like that because mm-hmm. for some reason, you Aye. know, he, he's done that to survive or whatever. And practical effects are the best thing you would have for him. CG would you take that away? And I mean, even though he's not in it for long, he, he was a nice villain. He, he was a villain that wasn't like, you know, like a corrupt judge or a Aye. Rico, for example, or a, a robot. I mean, he's half robot, half human, but he was genuinely a character who was mad. Like the corrupt yeah, he was seriously totally corrupted him. That was it. That was a good thing to have because, like, you're like, oh my. Because that was the thing in Dread, you don't really see the corrupt earth. Mm. And they talk about it and they say that it's a big yeah. Mad Max style wasteland. You see, you see, like, a tiny portion of it and it's mainly a desert land. You don't really see much ruins or anything like that. It's just like a cave. That's, that's about as much as you really see of it. But, like, you know. Depending on how how much they were actually willing to put into the sort of depth of it, because they're not really in the wasteland for that long. It's like about twenty minutes total, and then they're that back was, in the city. That was weird, I. That was weird because they say, "Oh, you can't go out in this wasteland because it, 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 you know when Dred's been sentenced, you know his sort of friend and colleague who is like the head judge at the time, he retires Aye. because he doesn't want to sentence him. No, it's because Dred if. If he hadn't well, retired, he get... Dredd was going to get killed. Like, so, he was going to get a death penalty. Yeah, so he retired and he says, you have to, you know... Yeah, acknowledge my last... My last command is, is thing me. So they say, be lenient with Dredd. And, but when he retires, he has to take the long walk oh. in the wasteland. And that's that's it. Like, he just... You see him get put out. But the next time you see him is after... Well, just before um, Dredd fights Mean Machine. Uh, and he gets stabbed because... You know, he, he's not really that important of a character. Um, mean Machine gets his cunt kicked in. Right. Because Judge Dredd, Judge right. Dredd's going to kick his cunt in. And uh, yeah, that, this is the bit where Dredd gets told that he's actually a clone. He's, like, artificially created. He's not a real human being. Oh, dear. Who's sad? <laughs> so, yes, um, Dredd finds out that he is a clone. He's artificially made. He's not a real human being. He's not Captain America. Oh, he's not real. He's like your imaginary friend. Which one? <sighs> <laughs> You're not a child <laughs> anymore. Um, yes, so this kind of gives him a sort of otherworldly experience of like, oh my God, I'm not a real person. Like, I'm mm. an emotionless husk and I was made that way and that's the end of it. And Which actually only lasts about two minutes in this movie. And then he realises, no, I've got a job to do. 
Where in any other movie, that would be like a major crisis, and it would take the main character like a good half hour to get over. Like in this, it's just like, all right, cool. Right, what are we doing next? <laughs> yeah, so yada yada yada. He goes and confronts Rico. Rico being his brother. Rico wants to create a an army of dreads, basically, and they can be what, his evil family. Dreads? Evil dreads. Evil dreads. Evil dreads. As you say. Evil dreads. All dreads are evil. Uh, yeah. So you know, he goes into this whole big speech about how you know he was artificially created. He wants his own people, he wants his own family, he wants to be in control and he wants to do everything he wants to do. And the film kind of just ends with Dread killing all the clones and, you know, burning the whole Dang science lab down. Aye, that's that, about it, aye. How Judge Dread you can do. you get? How What more do you want from Dread? He is serving the law his way. So that's kind of it for the story, but there's points in between the story that kind of caught your eye. Oh, aye, aye. Um, one of the main ones is, as James says, Dredd goes to the academy to basically give a, give a lecture, I guess, to the new recruit judges that are about to go on the street. And he shows them the tech that they're about to use when they're on the street. And it's not the best quality stuff to be showing them, to be honest. Like... I the gu- like he shows them the lawgiver too, which is basically in the dread verse is a gun that if you pretty much command it to do something, like if you just say like grenade, it will fire a grenade at it. Is like the best gun ever. Um, it's if I tell it to fire a laser beam, aye, or like magic dildos, will it do it? Don't know if it go that far, but you know, you know, you know. What I mean, it is essentially your whole fucking GTA loadout in one gun. Because he does rapid fire, does grenades, does road flares, as we've seen in the Dread movie. Um, but it also does hundreds of stuff. Um, but, so, he shows them that, how that operates, and he says you get that if you graduate. He shows them the armour that they'll be wearing, including the shoulder pads and the helmet, which is almost fully bulletproof, I believe. And he says you'll get that when you graduate, and then he shows you the little thing. At the, is it fully bulletproof though? Because I mean, I'm pretty sure we seen a judge at the start of that film get loaded into with bullets. Aye, like, aye, aye, aye. But I, I, did, did, they get, did they get hit in the head? But did they get hit in the head? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Exactly. Right. But even then, that helmet like looks more armored than everything. Like, I know. Like why, why, why did your shoulders look? What's under? Your and head? he certainly didn't get shot in the mouth. Aye, definitely not. Although there was a lot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fair bit. I um, it was uh, this film certainly been around the block a wee bit because uh, there is a lot of blood. It was the first ten minutes of the movie too. I think and uh, there yeah. was already one death. Uh, well, you know that's what you uh, would expect. Uh, to be honest, I mean, I'm pretty sure in Urban's Dread, there's yeah, like, well, there's I, more than one death. Yeah, in the first five I, minutes, those like are, those are hell of a lot of gruesome. To be honest, those are pretty badass. That is how um, it is. But I and then the last bit of equipment that he shows the recruits that they're about to use is a faulty lawmaster, which is essentially the thing of the cops' motorbikes. But this thing can fly and stuff like that. And why he's showing them one that doesn't work, I don't know. Because he, he's seen earlier that all the other judges had ones that worked. Why not show him one of them ones? Let like show them how it's meant to work rather than show him a faulty one so they don't understand. That's like some, that's like you going to work and finding out, getting taught how to do something completely different than you're actually meant to be doing. You're a liability then. Justice Department should look into dread about this. They've got a claim. We've got a serious <laughs> claim, mate. Serious claim. The city council need to get some shit sorted. But I, I mean, that's another time when you see, you know, Stallone hit out with some sarcasm lines and, you know, he's like, oh, this is your armour, you get this when you graduate. This is the law bringer, you get it if you graduate. Um, and this is, like, the law bringer, you get it if you can fix it. And it's not a line, y- it maybe is a line that you would expect him to say, because oh. Dread, if anything, is a sarcastic bastard. Like, that is his character. He's just somebody who just doesn't care. He doesn't want to be teaching a lecture. He wants to be out, like, shooting people. He wants to be out sorting the problems out. That's his thing. He's essentially, like, in this one moment, you kind of think of him as that kind of person that if you ever go to work and it's just like, how the hell have you still got a job? But then you realise it's just because they've been there and they've gone through so much shit. 
So he try, because uh, just after that bit, he gives them a wee bit of a lecture about how hard it is being a judge and all that. And these guys are about to graduate. This is not the kind of stuff they need to hear. They need, they need as much confidence as possible on these streets by like it, because in the first five minutes, the one's been killed off. So we need like it really needs to, Dredd really needs to study up on his teaching methods because it's not the best. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't mind Dredd as a teacher. I think he just needs somebody to go for a pint with. I mean, he does. He is pretty clear in this film that he doesn't want friends. Yeah. And then you know the the, the you know his partner in it. Um, she basically says to him, "Oh, have you ever like had a friend or whatever and stuff?" And she's like, he, well, "Her name's Hershey, uh, like the chocolate." Um, Hershey basically says, oh, "What happened to your friend?" Like I want to know, and he doesn't really talk about. It. You never really. F- I mean, I don't know if he means Rico. It is Rico. Is it Rico? Because it? later you find out when she breaks into his locker, like after he gets arrested for the so-called murder that he done. Um, he's got two pictures, one of him as a baby, which has clearly been photoshopped, and another one of him with another judge that she's never seen before. And that turns out to be Rico, who actually turns out to be his brother. Mm-hmm. And so he's basically, you know, grassed up his brother and his best mate. All right, well, so. that's, uh, that is a thing. I mean, <laughs> the big the big sort of problem that myself and Matt and pretty much anybody who knows Judge Dredd and has watched this film has is the lack of helmet, the lack of helmetage. <laughs> he wasn't given us enough helmet. Sounds like... There's not enough head. Um, Yeah. It's a uh, a serious issue. Sounds too much like a sex ed. Fucking, I bet you're getting off right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and remember, just the tip. <laughs> like, it's um, it's um, it's one of those ones where it's like because his uniform is so important to the dread canon, you do expect him to use it. This film he doesn't. However, part of me argues that that is what the story entails i mean i wouldn't personally if they done it in the comic i don't think that you know the the the, the high judges and stuff like that would be just letting them have his armor and mm. he's swaddling off this film is a film about dread you know he's been outcast he can't he's not the law anymore like he's he's not that character anymore and he doesn't have his outfit he doesn't have the helmet he doesn't have anything like that it fits it fits to me but i would rather they just had a completely different story to be honest because i don't want to see him without it because you never do it's part of the mystery of like who is judge dread like who is under that mask i mean like i this this sort of story is i'm not going to say it's not a bad story because it is all the stuff's there to make it a good story it's just not i think it's a very i think if they were to actually do this nowadays they would probably do it maybe give him two films where he's constantly wearing a helmet you never find out who he is and then maybe if it's like a trilogy like the last one is the one he actually takes the helmet off sort of thing you know you don't see it that it just cuts to black (laughs) well not even that like Maybe, well, maybe not as early as you, you see him do it in this movie, but like towards the end, because it gives you a bit of mystery about him and stuff like that. And then if in the very last movie, if it was maybe like the last 15, 10 minutes of the movie, he takes the helmet off and you finally see, oh, hold on, that's what he actually looks like. And then probably gets stabbed or something, I don't know, like, you know. <laughs> you know, but I mean, like, that's that, that way, that's the way of, that's the only excuse I would give for taking the helmet off. On, I, I don't know, way. I think when you've got a character, I mean, it's very much like, you know, Iron Man without his armor. So Iron Man three. <laughs> <laughs> shade, serious shade. Um, yeah, but Iron Man three was deemed. I mean, people were like, "How can you get worse than Iron Man two? Then Iron Man three came out. Man so, so bad. <laughs> I've said that now. That's going to end up going on record. All right. Yep. You said that. Just you said Iron Man two was the best one. Um, but yeah I mean it's like it is that kind of thing it's so close to his character I don't well I think you know when you if you were to compare the two there is no comparison if you compare Stallone's Dread to Urban's Dread there's no competition Urban wins right because he played the character so much better but also because of that hot shot scene because that's just excellent yes yes <laughs> um, everything's so much better in Urban's Dread you should watch it 
Um, because if you never watched it, you're the reason we, it didn't get a sequel, and you're a bad person. And you should go home, you should sit in a nice cold bath, and just ask throw the yourself. Toaster in. No, what, what? And throw the toast. <laughs> what? Oh my God, the law's gonna we, come. We, in. we went, we went to so totally different directions there. <laughs> I was just gonna say, have a have a serious think, and then go watch it. And then join the petition to get the sequel made, and you'll just like throw the fucking toaster in. Although, like that petition is still going, so if he's are listening to this, go sign it right now because we need another dread movie. Anyway, dread was dread was a, an incredible movie, but we're not here to talk about no, dread because no. we'll talk about dread another time. This film, if you ask me, does the first sixteen and a half minutes is Judge Dread. Right. Everything after that could have been anybody else. Didn't have to be Dread. Could yeah. have been anything. Could be any other judge for that, for that matter. It's just yeah. anything. Um, but there are some other things that we should really address, I'm thinking. Well, one thing I want to address is a conversation that he has with Hershey. Okay. Dredd and Hershey have a conversation. This gives you an, an idea of what kind of character Dredd is. You know, um, he is a man who's so dedicated to the law because he was artificially made to be that way. Mm-hmm. But um, take it away, you know, even though, you know, he was artificially created, he is trying to be a human and he's just in his head he just believes the law is you know the law is god you know you know that's why you know in the comics it's so important that he always has his uniform on why he always wears the helmet because this is a man who genuinely believes that law and order is the only way to make humanity civil again it's the only way to do it and you know, he's read the law book front to back, like, you know, that's his that's his nighttime reading before he goes to bed. You know, that's what he does. He knows that book back to front. He knows every law back to front. And Hershey's like, Oh, you know, we have a social life and stuff like that. I have a social life. I have friends and stuff like that. Like, don't you have friends? And he's like, No. But this is the thing. Dread is a character who's solely built on law and order. That's the that's why, you know, people people uh would probably say, oh, what's the big deal? We're not wearing his helmet and blah, 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 blah. It's, the, it's what that outfit represents. That, he, to him, justice doesn't sleep. He's like Batman in a sense. It's like... He's Batman out, without he, the, br- the side of Bruce Wayne, I guess, then. Yeah, like. Dredd would be out day and night mm-hmm. making sure that the innocent people were safe. And yeah, he doesn't go the best way about it. You know, no second chances with him. Like, if you fuck up and you don't listen to him, he will shoot you. Oh, um, that is the way it's got to be in this sort of world because, well, in this sort of dread world because of the overpopulation in the city. They've got to find a way of hair, thinning out the hair a wee bit, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Um, I think it's, I think this is it's a, a city built for 20 million and there's 65 million in the city. That's why it's so overly packed and so many different things are going on, like riots and whatnot. So you kind of understand why he's got to work as hard as he can and why he's got to be such a hard ass about it yeah and i mean i'll, I'll give stallone his credit i yeah. think if i think if stallone just had the outfit on the whole thing people wouldn't have so much of an issue with it because it didn't feel like see as soon as he takes the helmet off he wasn't playing dread to me mm. it's, it's, it's like i said it's what his uniform you know symbolizes he is he is walking judgment he is you know he he will he will kick the shit out of you, and then if you still fight him, he will just shoot you. You know, he gives you he gives you a chance, and if you don't want it, then that's it. That's the way it's got to be. And so he's essentially Batman with a gun. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the interesting thing about him. He's a bit like the Punisher, but the, he's got the law behind him. That's it. Like he, that's how he lives, and that's obviously why it's a big deal not having the outfit and stuff like that mm. because it takes away from who his character is. Again, the superior thing about Urban's Dread is that he always wore the outfit. He never took it off, and all you got was the grumbly face and the the quick wit. Do you know what I mean? Like the dark humour, which Stone had in the first sixteen and a half minutes. But everything after that is just overkill. It's not Dread. Like, right. Do you know what I mean? Another thing that I think we need to address is how unprepared the Justice Department was in this movie for you know everything. Like, even at the start, like, if the, the judge that gets killed, I know he's a rookie, but, like, you don't just bust a door open and then expect everybody to drop their guns. It's the cockiness, though, I, I know, think. but it's, it's just, it's still, it's, even if he did that, like, you'd, you'd 
have your gun ready. You'd have your gun ready, at least. Like, he was like, moan then. And it just wasn't happening. <laughs> moan then. Aye. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... I mean... It's, uh, it's a representation sometimes like Aye. you know how you would see an American TV show display a copper that's a rookie like just busts in any Disney kid Aye. things aren't happening fast enough people are getting guilt you know I'm going in and Dredd's just like no son don't do it and he goes and does it and he gets shot and Dredd's just like well fuck you then like you know <laughs> you know you don't sit in that academy being trained for like days maybe Aye, <laughs> days it feels like they only get trained for a couple of days Aye, and that's the same like it most of them anyway Dred feels like the only one that's actually had like sufficient training even though he's had all these years but at the same time you're just like how much training has everybody else actually had if he's the one everybody's scared of yeah I mean like, you know you think, you think if in total if it was a fair sort of system everybody would be fear of like just the police in general well not so much fear but you know like criminals would be I mean Dred showed that you know he didn't give a fuck when he blew that guy's car up yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he just—he really didn't care. It was irrelevant to him, and he was just like, "Well, if you're not going to listen to me, I'm just going to shoot you." And that's the end of it. There's not going to be an argument, and that's what makes his character. That was very Carl Urban Dread. That Aye. was very like that's something you expect him to do. He didn't do it because he wanted to be an ass. He done it because I'm going to make an example of you, and that's it. So yeah, like I mean, uh, St- Stallone does play him moderately well weirdly <laughs> as a <laughs> weirdly as soon as he gets the, the helmet off that's it no the, the magic's gone but <laughs> but it, those bits that for that 20 minutes or so where he's in the wasteland it does feel like a survival film it Aye. feels like the kind of situation i would want to see dread in so the other thing i was going to mention was as i say is Justice Department not really being up to scratch. One of the main things that kind of pissed me off is like when Rico breaks out of jail, like the, the deal with the lawgiver too. The log, I as the lawgiver, um, the guns they are genetically coded to only be used by judges, and they are uh, booby trapped. If anybody else even lifts the gun and tries to pull the trigger, it will essentially just attack them. It will electrocute them. It will blow up whatever. What like the reason I'm kind of getting at this is the Justice Department know of Rico. They know he's alive because I've had him in Max. Even if he's in Max, would you not kind of take his DNA off file? Other like because there's obviously the risk of him getting out and then using a, a lawgiver, and that's like one of the major major weapons in this city by the looks of it. Like I don't understand why. It seems like it seems like a you know a clerical error. But well, this was a weird <laughs> thing because you know when when Rico goes and kills those two people Aye. and blames it on Dread. When Dread's on trial, they say that a lawgiver can only be shot with that exact same idea. Exactly. But see, because Dread and Rico are made from the same DNA, yeah. Then effectively, to erase Rico's DNA, you have to erase Dread's. Technically, so, yes, but but so I don't know. Like, there's a contradiction there, but I mean, obviously, I we're not like you know, CSIs or nothing. Speak like that for here. yourself. What do you think I do on Sundays? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, but that, that's that's like, that's what I go for. I got this idea that you know, Rico and Dread no, do, are like, effectively. I do get it. Built but on the same DNA. I mean, and, at the same time, like obviously, Rico and Dread are going to have similar DNA, but they're not going to have identical DNA because, like, nobody's DNA is identical. They're artificially created. I mate. know, right? They're but practically clones, and I'm trying to solve them, right? Like, that's all I do in the house is just sit and watch like forensic files and stuff like this, right? So I'm up on it. I know what I'm doing. But oh, like, sorry, we are so in the presence of a master, exactly, ladies and gentlemen. Right. And I'll have people vouch for me. <laughs> this is probably how I would easily get away with a murder, but. Uh, not putting that on quote or anything like that, but just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if anybody doesn't see James for a few days, you'll know where he's been. Um, right, so, like, obviously their DNA is going to be coded into the gun, and every time, like, a bullet is fired, that bullet is tagged with their DNA. But that's not to say the exact same DNA is going to be, you know, going through each. It just seems like a, a kind of flaw in the system, I'm thinking. Like, it seems like something... Obviously, it's not something that's been obviously looked at because most judges are meant to be 
law-abiding citizens never really going to jail or anything meant like to be i mean we've got, we, we have the dark judges it as is, well i know it is avoid but it seems like an avoid an avoidable like error on the justice departments i mean loads of things are avoidable errors i know rico's an avoidable error if it's something i can pull up it's got to be something that everybody else has got, clearly got a thought on by now man Let's look they're serious. dealing with riots and overpopulation mate they've got a lot on their plate like they're looking for an excuse to kill people they should have been grateful to rico but they won there and dread suffered for it but yeah i mean it's not the best film but it's not the worst would you think not the worst, there are definitely worst ones out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's not the worst comic book movie, let's say that, right? I mean, it totally because tops the 90s Captain America yeah. and Catwoman. And most of the other ones that you seem to have reviewed by now. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this was made in 1995, do you uh, know what I mean? Like, it, I had a bit of time on those. Um, still talk Green Lantern, I know. I'll be honest, I think Escape from New York looked better. <laughs> than this Judge Dredd film and that was made in like the 70s near enough I think I've seen that you've never seen the Escape films Escape from New York Escape from LA Snake Plissken man no oh. why I've seen Escape from Alcatraz why the Plus. fuck do we have you here go home and watch them <laughs> like they're great films they're ac- they, that is that is an action film they are action films go watch them okay they're great good so Matthew we're at the end of this beautiful, beautiful journey together. How do you feel? A wee bit enlightened. Do you feel humbled? A wee bit, aye. Well, you, would you come back? Probably. Uh, if you had to rate the film at a ten, ten being the best. It'd be a three. A three? Three has been generous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, I mean... I, I, like, see, to be honest, like, I'm mainly giving it a three because of, like, you know, the aesthetic feel it gives you like it looks amazing but at the same time you, you it's not one of them ones that i'd go out my way to try and watch yeah unless i had to in this case yeah definitely <laughs> it's uh it's it's a weird one it's not great definitely brings back bad memories of past radio shows and stuff mm. that won't be talked about okay we shan't we shan't <laughs> we shan't bring them up but yeah um I'd probably get a four, just because it's it just it's just that wee bit shorter. It's not it terrible. Up. Like let's say that it's not. I mean, it's it's not kind to the to the to the source material, but it's not exactly butchering it either. Yeah, I mean, my biggest flaw with it is just it does kind of try to stick to the source material in terms of villains, in terms of like. It feels like a Judge Dredd story. Aye. My biggest complaint, he, he just wouldn't leave his helmet on. Um, I get the feeling that's going to be the title of this one. Just you you can leave your helmet on. <laughs> or you can leave your helmet on. Da, da, da. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, and then, you know, there's other things as well. The story just feels a bit... I mean, the story pretty much... It's kind of free flowing in a way, but Aye. things seem to happen far too fast. Aye. Like you know, they get out of the wasteland really quickly. You know, they things just seem to just happen with no explanation. But that's probably a good thing because too much of this film would be horrifying. I'll give the film credit. I mean, it it doesn't run for an immense amount of time. No, I think it's about an hour and a half. Just not much more than that. I think. No, I would. I, I would. Mm, 96 minutes so yeah an hour and a half let's uh it didn't feel like it i'll give it i'll give it credit it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't drag in no it doesn't drag in like maybe i'll get a five i'll get a five i'll get a five average not the best not the worst it's uh it's all right i wouldn't watch it again but (laughs) (laughs) well maybe i would we have a we have a a dread drinking game take a drink every time he takes his helmet off and then continue drinking until he puts it back on. Oh, take a drink every time he says, I know you say that. Uh, oh, oh wait. We then up pissed. <laughs> take, take a drink every time Stallone makes a cheesy line. You'd be fucked. Like, I'd need my stomach pumped by the end of it. Yep, you'd be dead. 
Anyway, so we're at the end of it. We hope you enjoyed it. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Glaswegian Geeks. You can listen to this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, and soon we'll be working on a lovely little YouTube channel where dear Matt here will be the master of our top fives and tens. You get to see my face and things. It's the only thing he gets on top of. But yes. Wow. Yes. Um, we hope to see you. We hope you enjoyed this. Let us know what you think. And let us know what you think of the film. Because uh, you might have enjoyed it a bit more than us. Um, I know that I certainly don't know how I feel about it. But uh, yes, as always, geek out, guys. We're out. See ya.